Hello, hello everybody, this is Quoth and my channel is dedicated to Diablo 2. Today we are going to continue our adventure in the Project Diablo 2 with my Dark Park Necromancer. So last time we farmed Cow Sanctuary and there were a lot of narrow passages and kind of uneasy places. So this time I really want to try out the build and see if it rocks on the open area maps like for example Cow level. So we are going to raid cows for 100 times and see what kind of loot we are finding. Also I would like to see out of all the rune farming places which one is the best. Driving cow, LK or cows. I had again a beginner's luck or basically a starter luck because in the round 2 first drop I get is a storm shield with 22% damage reduction. On the same run, just a little bit later, I get my first unique ring. Actually, the second one was just Eye of Mardini, so I decided not to show it. But this one is Nagel Ring, with 33% of magic find. And later on, I get another unique piece of jewelry. This time it is an amulet, and it rolled High Lord's Wrath, with 32% lightning resistance. This is really cool one. On the run number 5, out of the Rakan issue, I get a Suicide Branch. Nothing special, but uh, it's still rolled with 2 to Blood Warp and 2 to Blood Pollen. Nice beginning weapon. Uh, on the same run, a little bit later at the Chaos, I actually get my first killer. This time it rolled Curses for Necromancer, which I happily swapped right away. Three runs later, I get my first notable mid rune. This one is... Um, room. And just slightly later at the same run I get magic Emmy. So usually I pick them up and identify a little bit later because otherwise it takes too much time to identify all the amulets and jewels. So this one rolled plus 3 to necromancer summoning skills and 10 FCR. On the run 11 I get another item of Rakanishu. This time it is Unique Templar's Code, which is Guardian Angel. On the next run I find my first unique belt. This one is Razor Tail. Couple of runs later and I find my first unique gloves. This one's rolled Mage Feast. On the run 17, I think I found one of the best drops in this series. It is actually Lars of Puzzle Box. Really nice. Also, I think it is priced now at about low rune. And just at the end I identify this small charm with attack rating and life. Also quite good. Run 18 starts off quite funny. Actually, uh, the first find is this uh, set kite shield, which is Mila Brega's set. It has 51% MF. But what is funny is actually a little bit later, I kill another two cows, and each of them drop also set kite shield. So in total, I found three of them. You can see them right here, with the best one uh, of 59% magic find. And by the end of this run, I find the biggest failure of this episode. It is 15% ED, 3 AR, plus 3 to bow skills, and 3 open sockets matriarchal bow. Seriously? I find another matriarchal bow, but this time it is unique. It is Blood Raven's Revenge, with plus 2 to bow skills, 325% ED, 299% AR, and it also allows to summon revives, which is quite cool. Run 22 brings me Trangul's gloves, with only 11% to poison skill damage.
On the round 28, I get an Amrun, the second one. At the round 31, I identify one of the jewels that I have in my inventory, and this one happened to roll 39% enhanced damage, similar to what I found in Chaos Sanctuary. On the very next run, I have two interesting drops. Uh, they are not particularly good, but still. So first is a Taos Mask that rolled good on life and maximum all resistances. And just a little bit later, I identify Grand Charm, it is Barbarian Combat Skiller with plus 3 to Dex. On the runs 33 and 37, I find mid runes. First, it is a Lem Rune. And just a little bit later, it is another Lem Rune. They are quite okay for trading for skillers, for example. On the round 39, I find an item that I actually wear still right now. I haven't found anything better as a chest piece. This one is a Kehagen's Wisdom, with plus 1 to all skills, 20 FHR and 20 FCR. On the next run, I find an item that is good for any beginner's casting build. It is Wizard Spike, with 50% faster cast rate and 75 to all resistances. On the run 43, I get my first piece of a cow set, which is pretty excited because now with a full set you can transform into the cow. So this is a cow head, and actually it's not a bad one. It gives plus one to skills and cannot be frozen. On the next run, I get another two great finds. It is a large charm with 29 to life and 8 to all resistances. And later on I pick up this heraldic shield that actually rolled 45% to all resistances and free open sockets. Two runs later I get a second piece of Tao's set. This time it is a set lacquered plate which is Tao Russia's guardianship that rolled with 82% to magic find. And later on in the same run I get another unique amulet, which is quite cool, and this time it rolled Mara, but my god, only 20% to all resistances, anti-perfect, what a shame. On the run 53 I find unique light plated boots. These are goblin toes, with 25% to crush and blow, and you can see just another cow head. Two runs after, dealing with a group of cows, I find G-Face. And again, on the next run, I find another unique belt. This time it is Demon Hide Sash. This one rolled String of Ears with 6% life leech and 15% damage reduction. A little later I get another skiller, so as you can see there are quite plenty in this series. It is a defensive skiller for a paladin. On the run 60 I get another pair of unique boots. These ones are sandstorm tracks, although they rolled with really low strength and vitality and 59% to poison resistances. And on the same run I get another mid rune, pool rune. On the run 61, I deal with a crazy big horde of cows. I had to even increase speed here a little bit. So just to show you that I found set cow armor. But later in the same run, I find my actually only high rune, which is Vex rune. Another skiller comes two runs after. This time it rolled Druid Summoning Skiller. Then comes the third piece of a Tau set. This time it is a Mesh Belt and it also rolled low on the magic find, only 
There was a dry spell of about 9 runs where I didn't find anything worth showing, until I find actually a nice killer. This one is a cold killer with plus 31 to life. On the run 80, I almost dropped what I think the rarest find out of everything that I've seen in the small charm category. It is 313 poison damage small charm. Really crazy rare thing. A little bit later I get another lamb rune. Then comes another skiller that I would be glad to use on my barb, which is Warcry Skiller. And about 3 runs later another pool rune. Then comes another small charm, this time for a melee character, plus 3 to max damage and 16 to attack rating. And another small charm worth showing, this time it is a plain 7mf small charm. Run 92 was plenty for runes. Although there are only two, but still quite good. So first is a Mao rune. And just a little bit later I get another Am rune. I think it's a third one. On the run 93 I find another skiller. This one for assassins and it is plus one to traps. And finally I find also said Grandmatron bow, which is part of a Mavina set, which rolled with 261% enhanced damage. On the run 96 I identify this rare jewel, usually they are crap, but this one, look at it. 7 FHR, 21% AD and 10% to all resistances. Isn't that awesome? And later on a cow level I find Gavel of Pain, which wrought 253% enhanced damage. And to wrap it up I find on my very last run 100 another Mal rune. Alright guys, there you have it. So basically to answer the question we posted first, is the Dark Park Necromancer ruling all the open area? Well, no. The damage is too low even to deal with chaos on a player's one. Really, it needs to be bumped up. As for the next series, I'm actually looking to build some physical damage character, so if you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comments, I will be really happy to see. And as usually, thank you for watching, and if you didn't sub yet as Deckard Kane told you, then please do so, I would appreciate it a lot. Thanks a lot, and see you next time.